Hello, everybody. I assume everybody in this room already knows that IoT devices can be sometimes actually quite insecure. While there have been plenty of work on detecting attacks that compromise the devices and install, for example, malware on them, for example, to abuse them, uh, these devices for denial of service attacks, less attention has been given to so called contextual attacks. Just as uh, I said, I'm Philip Rieger from TU Darmstadt, and together with my colleagues, Marco Kedes, uh, Rea Mormit, Markus Mitinen, Hussein Feridoni, and Amat Sadegi, we developed Argus, a system to detect these uh, attacks. But what are contextual attacks actually? For this, let's look on three different scenarios. First of all, we have the benign scenario. The user arrives at home, uses his smartphone to send a message to the cloud service, for example, the cloud of the smart home manufacturer that he would like to open the door, and then the uh, cloud service sends a message to the smart door uh, and says, hey, please open. In the second scenario, we have the classical attack. Therefore, an adversary compromises the uh, smart door, installs some virus on it, and then sends a message to the malware running on the smart door to open the door. However, as this message you, uh, is very likely to defer significantly from the message that the cloud service sends usually to the benign software on the smart door, this can be easily detected when inspecting actually the network traffic or inside the smart home. The question is, what happens if we have a sophisticated adversary that do not talk directly to this uh, door itself, but actually exploits an insecure cloud service. So for example, there have been many cases where the cloud service for IoT devices do not require any authentication, but just take uh, the ID of a device, take a comment, and then just forward the comment. Then the adversary can simply send a message to the cloud service, please open door number 10, and then the cloud service sends the message to the door to open. Notably here, the message is sent by the cloud service as well in the, as in the benign scenario. Therefore, the message has the exact same format and it is indistinguishable from the message in the benign scenario. And therefore, if we just look on the network traffic in the, um, in the smart home, we cannot detect these attacks. There's actually only one chance to detect these attacks, and this is, is looking at the context where the action is invoked. In the benign scenario, it is very likely that the user just arrived at home because he wants to enter the home, while in the uh, uh, attack scenario, the, some attacker wants to break in into the house. Therefore, the user is very likely to be absent. So let's now look on uh, existing solutions to protect IoT devices. First of all, uh, of all, are there, of course, uh, the solutions that look on the network traffic. However, as we have just seen on the previous slide, these uh, solutions cannot uh, detect such contextual attacks because the network traffic is indistinguishable. The second uh, category of approaches are policy-based systems. Uh, um, a user can set up a policy, when I'm absent, then the door must not open. However, as these policies heavily depend on the user habits, these uh, policies also need to differ between every different smart home. Therefore, the end user would have to set them up, which is uh, not practical. And secondly, if some uh, end user who is not skilled in security sets up some policies, then it's very likely that an attacker, uh, or especially a sophisticated attacker, can find a gap in these policies. The last category, there are few approaches that look on the context, therefore the state of the other devices. However, here we have different weaknesses and shortcomings in these approaches. There are some approaches that require additional knowledge about the IoT devices, which are sometimes not available. The second category is restricted to, uh, or requires training data for the attacks. Therefore, these approaches are restricted to known attacks and cannot detect unknown attacks. And the last um, subcategory here um, considers only the invoked comments, but do not consider the state of the IoT device itself. To overcome these shortcomings, we developed Argos that detects such con uh, contextual attacks that are indistinguishable just by looking at the network traffic from the benign actions. Um, for this, we model the benign um, uh, behavior of the smart home uh, and using a neural network and then train this on how, to, how it behaves benignly and this allows it to uh, analyze the invoked or the status of the state changes of the IoT devices without any manual configuration or knowledge of the devices. The neural network then uh, predicts an anomaly score that is in the next step um, automatically tuned uh, or uh, compared against a dynamically tuned threshold for deciding whether this is an attack or it's a benign action. We evaluated Argus on five real-world data sets that we collected and published this data set as part of the artifact appendix to be available as benchmark for future work. So what are the assumptions that Argus make? 
mates. Um, first of all, of course, we assume that the security device itself, therefore the device where Argus is running, is not compromised. Secondly, we assume a benign setup phase, therefore we have a phase where we can just observe the regular behavior of the IoT devices and no attack is performed in this case. Both assumptions are quite typical for um, work on IoT security. The last assumption is that the IoT devices itself are not compromised. As we have just seen on the uh, previous slides, there are uh, plenty of work on that look on the network traffic, for instance, to, uh, to detect attacks that uh, compromise the IoT device itself. Therefore, we consider these attacks to be out of scope of Argus. Okay, how does Argus work? The first challenge is, of course, when we want to look on the context of the IoT devices, therefore on the states of all other devices, is that there is, we have a very heterogeneous device landscape. There are plenty of devices from uh, many manufacturers who use different platforms, different clouds, different protocols. So the question is, how can we uh, obtain the state of the IoT devices from this landscape? Um, for this, we um, can utilize the observation that even if some ma manufacturers do not care about security, all of them care about usability because that's what the customer cares about when uh, buying an IoT device. So um, all of them um, will make sure that um, the IoT devices can be easily integrated into home automation platforms and th this is where we just collect the device states and um, download them to get, obtain a complete picture of the smart homes. In the next step, the, um, the obtained device states are then converted to feature vectors and sent to the mod context modeling component that I will explain on the next slide in more detail. So the context modeling component then calculates an anomaly score that is compared against the dynamically tuned threshold. Okay, how does the context modeling work now in detail? Um, the context modeling operates on um, the, the context, IoT device context. Therefore, on the states of all IoT devices. We collect these um, device states over a certain time range to uh, obtain a picture how the smart home should behave um, normally and use this as benign training data. These uh, training data are then converted into feature vectors and the question is of course now, how can we train a neural network to detect attacks without having any training samples for the attacks itself? For this, we use a semi-supervised outer encoder so the idea here is that we give these feature vectors to the neural network and then ask the neural network to output the same feature vectors again. Of course, this won't work perfectly. Therefore, we will have some difference between inputs and outputs, and we measure these differences as a reconstruction error. During the uh, training, the neural network is trained to, uh, to minimize this reconstruction error for the benign input samples that we have collected in our training data set. Therefore, if the training is now finished and the neural network is deployed, and we want to apply for it, for example, to check if an action, like opening the door, is actually benign or an attack, we just convert it into a feature vector, give it to the neural network, then obtain the reconstruction, and then measure the reconstruction error. The idea is, if it is benign, then the neural network was trained to output the same feature vector again, therefore to, to opt, have a, a low reconstruction error. While if it's an attack, then nothing that is similar to the feature vector have ever occurred in the training data, therefore, um, we, we will have a high reconstruction error, which is then used as, as anomaly score and forwarded to the anomaly score classification. In, uh, in the last component, we, we just compare this anomaly score against the threshold. The challenge is, of course, that the anomaly scores differ between, every, um, can be quite different in every smart home because the anomaly scores, for example, depend on the number of um, IoT devices that are deployed. A naive solution would be to simply take the maximal score from the previous days. However, as you can see, this would result easily in some false positives and is therefore not uh, a, a good solution. Um, to, to fix this, we actually add a safety margin on top, therefore take the interval of the anomaly scores from the previous days, multiply it with some security level better, and then add it on top of this um, to um, create here some margin. The problem is, of course, that if we have uh, some abnormal events on some days that are not typical, but uh, are still benign, so for example, the owner of the smart home throws a big party, then we, uh, uh, we might have some uh, abnormal actions resulting in a very high anomaly score for, uh, for these days, and therefore this would allow the uh, adversary on the next day to just um, run attacks that are not detected. To prevent this, and prevent that in a single or few abnormal days can dramatically change the threshold, we um, smooth the threshold and do not just consider the last day, but also the previous days. Therefore, what we, um, we take the, um, for the threshold, we take the threshold of, of the previous days, multiply it with some aging factor alpha, 
and then add the threshold candidate of the, of the last state. Therefore, the maximal value plus the interval multiplied by one minus alpha to end users then as final uh, anomaly, um, detection in the threshold. For the evaluation, we collected data from five real world homes, um, representing a quite diverse setup with different living situations and also created some attack data. Therefore, for example, opening the door while the user is not at home or, um, or also something that is a little bit different because it's not relying on some malicious actions that are invoked, but just on observed malicious states. So for example, if there's some movement occurring when the user is absent and um, also collected attack data for these. As you can see, for all um, smart, or for four out of five smart homes, that we achieved an F1 score of at least, uh, or of 100%, and also for the last home, we achieved an F1 score of 99.64%, which is still quite high. Um, in addition to these experiments, this is of course just a small, uh, uh, a small uh, part of the evaluation that we have done, the, all the experiments you can see in the, in the paper, but we also evaluated how many days of training data we actually need to collect to train an effective co uh, context modeling component. And as you can see here, se seven days of training data are already sufficient to achieve these performance. So to wrap it up, IoT devices are vulnerable to contextual uh, attacks because these attacks cannot be detected by existing uh, network intrusion detection-based systems as the network traffic here itself is, is, is indistinguishable from ben uh, benign actions. Existing defenses against these attacks have a number of shortcomings. For example, they require additional knowledge about the um, devices, require manual setup, or uh, are now restricted to known attacks. Um, Argus detects contextual attacks by modeling the benign, cont the benign behavior uh, using a neural network and calculating anomaly scores, which are then classified using a dynamically tuned threshold. This enables Argus to, um, to detect these attacks without having any knowledge about the devices or the attacks, uh, without requiring any manual configuration, and with seven days of training data, we achieve an F1 score of at least 99.64%. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs>